Welcome back to our IB Physics video series. This is the fourth video in IB Physics Topic 2, Mechanics, where we will be looking at work, energy, and power. In our second IB Physics Topic 2 video, we discussed how forces interact with objects and with each other. But the action of providing a force requires energy, called work. This is defined as the quantity of energy required to apply a force to move an object in the direction of the force measured in joules. If an object is moved a distance, s, at an angle, theta, from the force, the formula for work done is force times distance times cosine of theta. Note, if an object moves in a direction 90 degrees to the force, no work is being done. Common scenarios that you will encounter are work done moving an object from rest, a ball is rolled 2.5 metres on a flat surface by a resultant 20 newton force. Thus, the work done is force times distance, which is 50 joules. Work done lifting an object. A weightlifter's shoulder presses a mass 60 centimetres above his head with 150 newtons of force. Thus, the work done is force times distance, which is 90 joules. Work done moving an object up a slope. A ball is rolled 1.5 metres up a 30 degree slope by a resultant 100 newton force. Thus, the work done is force times distance times cosine of theta, which is 75 joules. Work done holding an object up. The object does not move in the direction of the force, so no work is being done. A special scenario you will encounter is work done compressing a spring. The work done increases throughout the compression of the spring, for the same reason that the elastic force decreases. Thus, the formula is work done equals a half times the spring constant times the spring's extension squared. The IB also expects you to be able to calculate the work done compressing a spring from its force extension graph. This appears as a positively sloped line with the slope of the line equal to the spring constant and the area under the line equal to the work done extending the spring to that point. Lastly, it is assumed that in every interaction, the work done on an object by the force perfectly transfers to the object. However, in real life scenarios, this does not occur, as energy is lost in the form of heat and sound. In IB physics questions, you can assume that the work done perfectly transfers, unless you are asked about the efficiency. The work transfer efficiency is defined as the ratio of useful work output to total work input. So, we now know how much energy a force requires by the work done on the object. But how does this relate to the energy of the object? Well, the work done on an object to move is also equal to the energy the object has gained. The object's energy is thus defined as the quantity of work done on the object, also measured in joules. There are several types of energy. Kinetic energy, the energy due to movement a mass possesses, Gravitational potential, the energy due to gravity a mass possesses. Elastic potential, the energy due to compression or tension a mass possesses. Thermal energy, the heat energy a mass possesses. Sound energy, the energy a sound wave possesses. Chemical energy, the energy stored in the bonds of molecules. Nuclear energy, the energy produced by the nuclear reactions of an atom, and electrical energy, the energy produced by the movement of charged particles. In mechanics, you primarily deal with three of these types of energy, kinetic energy, gravitational potential energy, and elastic potential energy. The formula for kinetic energy is a half times mass times velocity squared. The formula for the change in gravitational potential is mass times gravity times change in height. And the formula for elastic potential energy is a half times the spring constant times the spring's extension squared. The total energy of an object is defined as the sum of its kinetic and potential energies. Whenever a force is applied on an object, the total energy stays the same, termed the principle of conservation of energy. There are two rules to this theory. One, the total energy of any closed system remains constant. 
and two, energy is not created nor destroyed, it only changes form. Just like with work, most real life events do not perfectly transfer mechanical energy, and lose some by the conversion into heat and sound. Assume that energy transfer is perfect, unless asked about the energy transfer efficiency. Let's look at an example question covering the principle of conservation of energy. A pinball trigger is pulled back 4 cm with 50 newtons of force, and fires an ball up at the pinball machine. A. What is the elastic potential energy of the spring? B. What is the gravitational potential energy at 11 cm up the pinball machine? And C. What is the kinetic energy of the ball at 11 cm up the pinball machine? For A, the elastic potential energy is half times the spring constant times the extension squared. However, elastic force is the spring constant times the extension. So, substituting in force, the elastic potential energy would be a half times the elastic force times the extension, which is 0.3 joules. For B, the gravitational potential energy is mass times gravity times change in height which gives 0.19 joules. For C, the total energy of the system is 0.3 joules, provided by the elastic force. At 11 centimetres, some of this has been converted into gravitational potential energy, and the rest into kinetic energy. Therefore, the kinetic energy is equal to the total energy minus the gravitational potential energy, which gives 0.11 joules. Lastly, in addition to knowing about work and energy, the IB expects you to understand the concept of power. Power is defined as the rate of energy transfer, or the rate of work done, measured in watts. The formula for power is energy divided by time, or work done divided by time. Let's look at an example question. An athlete expends 8 joules for every 25 centimetre step they climb. What power do they exert climbing one kilometre of steps in 15 minutes? The total energy expenditure is the energy per step multiplied by the number of steps, which is 32,000 joules. So, the power expenditure is the energy expenditure divided by the time in seconds, which gives 36 watts. But what if a problem gives you the force of an event and not the energy or work done? Well, Assuming the object moves in the direction of the force, the power is the force times the speed of the object. Like work and energy, assume that the power transfer is perfect in every problem, unless asked about the power transfer efficiency, which is defined as the ratio of useful power out to total power in. Let's try an example question. It takes 480 joules for every 5 seconds to maintain a moving block speed at 2.3 meters per second. The power transfer efficiency is 0.85. How much force is applied to the box? The total power transfer to the box is energy divided by time, which gives 96 watts. The useful power output is the efficiency times the total power input, which is 81.6 watts. Thus, the force applied is power divided by speed which is 35 newtons. You have now covered all of the content you need for work, energy and power to nail your IB Physics exam. We hope you enjoyed the fourth video in our IB Physics Topic 2 video series. Check out our notes, flashcards and questions on our website to reinforce your understanding from this video.